It's 11 o'clock. Do you know where your tibialis anterior is? Has it been a while since massage school? Are you headed to the integrative body work for the ankle and foot workshop and need a quick review? Ooh, integrative body work with Jonathan and Alex? I've heard they're really good. Well, you're in luck. I'm Alex and this is Integration Nation Body Work and we got one ankle review coming right up. So now here we have the, our first glimpse of the back of the leg. And we're going to look first at the superficial posterior compartment, which is what most people are really familiar with, the calf muscles, the gastrocnemius and the soleus, which is just underneath it. Together they form into the calcaneal tendon, which attaches at the posterior calcaneus. Although fascially the superficial layers are continuous over this heel cup area, and become part of the plantar fascia on the bottom of the foot. So we're going to look at that a little bit too at the finish. It's important to remember that these two muscles overlay everything that is underneath them. The whole deep posterior compartment. We, if you're doing body work with it, you're, gonna wanting to, you're going to want to work and ease those outer muscles first before you get to the deeper muscles. So the first thing we're going to start with is the gastrocnemius, which arises right up here above the femoral condyles. And you have two bellies, medial and lateral, and they're going to come down and insert on the calcaneal tendon about here. And then again, calcaneus to the bottom of the foot. So let's take a look at that. If I could have you push up against me, lifting the leg too. Yep. You can see the medial head is right there. There's the, that little, those little divots to kind of tell you where the femoral condyles are. So the gastroc goes a little bit higher than those. It's hard to feel that attachment at that point because it is deeper, hidden by some of the hamstring tendons right there. And keep that up as long as it's okay. The lateral one is a little smaller, a little bit more off to the side. Up to that lateral femoral condyle. And relax. So then the tendons continue on. I'm not going to draw that uh, all the way. Well, I will. Why not? Take that all the way down here, like so, tendon. The soleus is deep to the gastroc, so realize that everything I'm drawing now, you have to kind of take this one off, and then you can get better visualize the soleus underneath there. Uh, so the soleus arises from the head of the fibula, and this line, you can, I don't know if it shows, is going to show up in the, in the video at all, but there's a ridge running right here called the soleal line. I've even seen some sources that take it most of the way down the fibula, right, in this area. There is a gap. It doesn't attach to the inner osseous membrane because the blood vessels need a place to get underneath the soleus. Sometimes the soleus is referred to as the heart of, like, the second heart because as it contracts, it actually squeezes the blood in the vein at the bottom of the foot here, going up into the calf, and it will help return blood um, and keep it pumping through the system. You can kind of see, if you look at the gastroc carefully, you can see where it's thinner, thinner, and then suddenly it's got a little bit more bulk right through here. That's because underneath there is soleus and above it is not. So this kind of comes down in this area. Underneath. right next to the peroneus or fibularis longus right there. There, now we have the combined tendon at that point. Again, attaching the same at the calcaneal tendon. Because they're both on the back of the foot, they are very strong plantar flexors. There's a really interesting mechanical uh, shape that is created by the angling of the calcaneus, the fulcrum, and where it pulls the pivot point right here um, that allows these muscles to be very strong at our feet so we can lift up our entire body weight without really causing much of a problem. Because they're basically in the middle of the ankle, you don't really have much inversion or eversion capability to them, but there's a little bit more bulk just past the midline, so you may get a little bit of inversion due to these, but it's certainly not going to be strong. Mostly plantar flexion. However, the gastroc, as you may have noticed, comes from above the knee. If a muscle crosses the joint, it'll move that joint. So the gastroc, because it crosses the knee and back, will also flex the knee. 
This is helpful in stretching the calf. You may notice if you stretch the calf like against a wall or something that if you bend the knee, your stretch will start to differentiate into the soleus. As you bend the knee, it shortens the gastroc, which allows the soleus to get more of a stretch. But if you want to stretch the gastroc, you'll need to extend the knee all the way down. And the anterior compartment runs from the tibia over to the fibula. So it's this area, and primarily all those muscles go across the top of the foot, which means they're all gonna dorsiflex. So if I could have you pull your foot up like you're lifting off the gas pedal, all the way, lift your foot. Yeah, there you go. Now you can see all those muscles firing right there and relax. Uh, the, the main one that we're gonna focus on right now is the tibialis anterior. This one dorsiflexes and inverts the foot. So could you do both of those? Bring your foot up to this position and you can really see that popping out here. It arises about up in this area from the like upper two thirds of the lateral tibia and the adjoining interosseous membrane. And you can really easily feel the edge of the muscle belly right in there. Important area for differentiation when you're doing body work. So there's our muscle belly. The tendon is of particular note. It's gonna run down here. That's it right there. I'm gonna have you relax your foot and then I'm gonna turn the leg out and then do that same motion again, please. Perfect. It runs down and you can feel the edge of it right there. It runs down to attach, you can relax. Uh, the base of the first cuneiform and the first metatarsal. Or I should say the base of the metatarsal and the neighboring first cuneiform bone. That location is going to be important later when we look at the peroneus longus or fibularis longus because it's going to insert on the same spot. So because it crosses in front of the ankle and over to the medial side of the ankle, the tibialis anterior is going to dorsiflex and invert the foot. So if I could have you do that one more time, lift up and in, and you can really see the tendon popping out and the muscle belly as well. One of the easiest ones to find here. And go ahead and relax. Next up, we have the extensor digitorum longus. This one comes from the front, the head, and kind of the front area of the upper, like two thirds or so of the anterior fibula and the adjoining interosseous membrane. It's gonna go down, so that is, because it moves the toes, hence the name, like I may have you move your toes up against me. Up, there we go. And you can kind of see this area go and relax and then tense up again. You can kind of see this area tighten and that's gonna help us identify it. There's the head of the fibula. So we've got an attachment there. The, it can also, I think some sources will say it arises from the lateral tibial condyle as well. So this one's coming down about into this region. And go ahead and bring your toes up again. And you can see right there some shadowing as that tendon tightens up. It basically is a single tendon until about here. And then it splits into four. Keep that tension going. Perfect, thank you. I can do this without obscuring the camera. That one's hard to see, but it's there. It goes under the extensor retinaculum, like the tibialis anterior, and it goes all the way out through the extensor mechanism to the distal phalan phalanges, digits two through five. Me down there. So because it goes in front of the ankle and over to the lateral side, it's going to dorsiflex and evert. And it's also going to, as the name implies, extend digits two through five. Last muscle for this compartment is the extensor hallucis longus. I think we'll go with purple for that one to stand out. Um, this one arises from the middle half or so of the anterior fibula and the interosseous membrane. So basically underneath this, so I'll do a little stippled thing to indicate that. And then it pops out here. 
Halysis means it goes to the big toe. I think I said extensor. I think I messed up the name on that one. Extensor digitorum longus. This is a proof of concept video. We'll figure this out later. Um, go ahead, uh, lift your big toe up, please. Perfect. That's the tendon. Going all the way down. Okay. And relax. So its tendon, um, as it comes down here, is right next to the tibialis anterior, goes down to the distal phalanx of the big toe. And as its name implies, it's going to extend the big toe, all digits, um, or all phalanges. It's also, because it goes in front of the foot, it's also going to dorsiflex. Because it goes over toward the medial side of the foot, it is going to invert. And that is the anterior compartment. There is sometimes a fibularis tertius, which arises down here and inserts near its, uh, near the brevis, or proteus tertius, near the brevis, right about this spot. Some people have it, some people don't. Sometimes you can see an extra little tendon right through here coming down to this spot. Okay, here we now are over on the side. We're looking at the lateral compartment. The lateral compartment basically runs from the fibula over to the fibula, more in the front to the back of the fibula. It contains two muscles, the peroneus or fibularis muscles. The origin of the longer one of the two, peroneus or fibularis longus, is the upper two-thirds, including the lateral. There's a, there's a little hole right here for the uh, common peroneal nerve as it comes off of this sciatic sort of nerve break and then over to the top. So I always want to be careful right around that particular spot. So the head and upper two-thirds or so of the lateral fibula, and you can feel the fibula really easily underneath there. Could I have you swing your foot out to the side? Yeah, and you can, if you can't see it, it's. I can really easily feel it, and I'm outlining it right here. Go ahead and relax. Perfect. So that is our peroneus or fibularis longus. Uh, do that motion again. Just, yep, and you can easily see these tendons popping out down here. The fibularis longus goes behind the lateral malleolus, back behind here. It's held in place by a retinaculum, the peroneal retinaculum that sits right there. This one curls under the cuboid. So when I'm showing it here, it's, it's kind of odd. You have to remember that, I'm, that it actually is pretty high up in the foot and that this area is actually covering it up. It goes under the cuboid in this little channel and it goes all the way over to the same location that the tibialis anterior attached on the base of the first metatarsal and the first cuneiform bone. And we'll pick up with that tendon right here as it travels over right there. And bring it back so you can see how it courses all the way from the side to meet up with the tibialis anterior. Proteus brevis is about the middle or so half to two-thirds of the, sometimes into the distal area. Go ahead and swing your foot out for me against my resistance. Perfect. You can see, if you really look carefully, you can see there's actually two tendons right here. So let's draw this one underneath there. There's a bit of this, you can relax, thanks. There's this overlap zone where you've got these, the two musculotendinous junctions, and the bellies, this is a really effective area to work in body work if you need to work on the peroneals and get them worked quickly. The tendon comes underneath behind just, just like its longer partner here. And go ahead, push up again. And you can see that tendon going right to the stylate process or base of the fifth metatarsal right there. Because these muscles pass the lateral side of the ankle, they're going to be everters, swinging the foot out to the side. Um, and because they go behind the lateral malleolus, that's at the back of the ankle, and so they're also um, plantar flexors because of that. You can see how they course around and under and relax, and how these muscles will 
plantar flex and evert. Of important note here is the tibialis anterior and the peroneus longus, the way they come to a common attachment site and yet have exact opposite functions is really important for creating arch support. The peroneus lifts the cuboid, the tibialis and the peroneus actually kind of in pulling this down actually helps lift and support the arch of the foot and the tibialis anterior pulls directly on the top of the arch up. So those two muscles are really, really important for arch support and lifting in the middle. Here we are now on the posterior side and we got it realizing uh, that what I'm going to be, everything I'm going to be drawing here, I'm going to be drawing it as you would view it from the back. So it's the, the you'll get the perspective of how narrow these are, uh, but you'll miss a little bit of the perspective of where you would actually access them as a body worker to work on them because they are deep to, this is the deep posterior compartment, they're deep to the gastroc and the soleus, our main calf muscles. Uh, there's three muscles, and I always kind of thought of them as like a fleur-de-lis kind of shape in a way. There's a central one that's a little taller, and then there are two sort of like bodyguards on either side sort of protecting it. Because the tibialis anterior is so important for arch support, for the structure of our ankles and our feet, um, that it's like it needs bodyguards for support. So that's the way I've always thought about it. We're looking at the tibialis posterior to start, and it arises from this upper to mid area of the tibia, the fibula, and the interosseous membrane. If you look at that, there's like a, there's like a divot right in there. It's like a little nook, and it, like a corner, and it creates a really large surface area of attachment for this muscle which is a bipinnate muscle, meaning the muscle fibers are coming from both sides into a central tendon. What that means, why that's so special, is that you can pack a lot of muscle fiber into a small amount of space. So the tibialis, tibialis posterior is really strong, and it's basically kind of in this, if I kind of centralize that a little bit, it's basically right in here. I'll draw a little bit of the angling coming into that. Its tendon passes under the flexor retinaculum through the tarsal tunnel, similar to the carpal tunnel, but on the foot. It goes down through this region, and then at about this point, it actually spreads across the majority of the, high, the bones of the arch. When I was teaching massage school, I always told students to just look at the area that doesn't have any padding on it, that's basically where it attaches because its job is to spread out and grab all these things and pull them up to the center here. Because this muscle is on the back, crosses the ankle at the back, it will plantar flex. Because it goes to the medial side of the foot, it will invert the foot as well. Which when you kind of put those two actions together as it relates to these bones, will lift up and create some arch support for us. The two protectors are flexors, literally flexors. Um, so flexor digitorum longus is over here on this side. Flexor hallucis longus, they cross in the ankle, is over here on this side. Starting with the digitorum, it arises from the back of the tibia, right about in this area, so it's basically right next to. Similar shape and function, or I should say similar shape as the tibialis posterior, muscle belly up in this area, and it turns into a tendon, which goes under here through the tarsal tunnel to the bottom of the foot. And at this point, it's gonna start spreading and being joined by the deep intrinsic flexors of the foot. And it's gonna spread out its tendons to the distal phalanges, It doesn't go to the big toe, ignore that, of digits two through five. Just like tibialis posterior, because it goes at the back of the ankle, it is going to plantar flex. Because it goes across the medial side, it's going to invert. Because it goes to digits two through five, it's going to flex digits two through five. Also, like the tibialis posterior, it is going to help create some arch support for us. 
Flexor hallucis longus arises from the mid-back posterior, so posterior aspect of the fibula and a little bit of the adjoining interosseous membrane, so right in here. And it goes down, crosses over, now I can cover up my mistake, there we go. That's where the halysis goes, distal phalanx, digit one. Same course as the other two. So again, all these muscles, because they go in back of the ankle, will plantar flex. Because they go to the medial side, they will invert. And this one will flex the big toe. There are two sesamoid bones right in the neighborhood of this that go underneath the head of the metatarsal. Helpful for as we're walking, it creates, it creates a, a little area for this tendon to not get smashed, basically, but as we, as we walk and we toe off, because we toe off so heavily from this area. It just creates a little space for them to do that. When we do have issues with the big toe shape, where and we get some halysis valgus type stuff going on, um, it actually moves those sesamoid bones over and it can help sort of exacerbate this. So keeping that flexor halysis longus long and healthy and in shape helps us with toe things as well as ankle things. Again, keep in mind that I drew these as you would view them directly from the back. They're pretty compact. They all have to fit like in this little space right back here between these two bones. You realize I just drew those muscles as we viewed them from the back. As body workers, we're generally not gonna be pushing through all of that soleus and gastroc tissue to get to here. You can, but it's a lot to push through. So what you wanna do is find where that tibia is right here because the digitorum arises from the back of the tibia right here. We can actually access that muscle right behind here. So I'm gonna do a second drawing, try to get my colors correct. This is where we're going to access that flexor digitorum muscle belly tendon going on like so. We can also, because the tibialis posterior is right next to it, we can also dig a little deeper and get to the tibialis posterior from this area. The flexor uh, halysis comes from the fibula, and for that it's actually easier to flip over and access from the lateral side. So let me have you flip to the other side. Perfect, thank you. And that one is red. Again, ignore this. And right behind here, just behind the fibula, right next door to all this. So you'd have to kind of push the soleus off to the side a little, and then it will reveal this muscle right behind the fibula, right through there. Tendon, at that point, goes deeper to the other side. But the muscle belly is right there. Now, I wanna take a quick look at the bottom of the foot. We're not gonna go through every single muscle. There are a lot of them, actually. So as you look at the bottom of the foot and how it shapes itself, there's a lot of space between the bottom of the foot and the top of the bone structure right there, and that's all filled in with ligaments, tendons, muscles. There are several of them. Um, so I'm gonna just basically give you an overview of what they are, where they look, where they're attaching. Uh, the majority of them attach here, all along this calcaneal area, this like front under surface of the calcaneus, um, and they're all going across the bottom of the foot in this basic direction. Some of them end up going all the way to the toes. Both of uh, the longest muscles in the deep calf up here, both of them have brevis versions down here that meet up with the longuses. Um, and you've also got, I want to highlight abductor halysis, this which arises, it's the most medial of them. And it arises right here on the edge of the calcaneus. And I think there's some other connective tissue attachments as well. It goes all the way along the arch of the foot like this, attaching ultimately over here. And its job is going to pull the big toe out to the side. Another muscle I want to highlight is the opposing muscle to that, the adductor halysis, which is job, it's to pull the big toe over this way. It's kind of a fan-shaped muscle going across like that. 
regardless of whether those muscles go and have their individual attachments, because they're on the bottom of the foot, they're all crucial for arch support. They're all going to be bringing this edge, this front part of the arch and the back part of the arch closer together. Hey, thanks for watching. We really hope you found it helpful. And if you did, give us a like and subscribe. That really does help us out. Tick the bell too, that's fantastic. I'm Alex for Integration Nation Body Work. Take care of yourselves. Mm -hmm.